And we're also here to celebrate Sustainable House Day. That should be a national, uh, not a national, but a national holiday, right? Uh, but it falls on the Sunday, so <laughs> sorry guys, you can't, can't get off. Uh, for Sustainable House Day, it's all about promoting good ideas and also showing people what's possible. And this is what we want to do with tonight. So we saw an opportunity to um, be able to show some of the houses all together, so you guys kind of get the download of information all in one night, and also maybe if you guys were thinking about going out on Sunday, you might be able to see the one you want to check out the most, for that matter. So that is the this Sunday on the 13th of September. Make sure you register online to be able to get the addresses to where you need to go. So a little bit about Pecha Kucha. Um, Pecha Kucha is really a rapid fire sort of way of communicating ideas. So we're really putting all of our presenters to the up to a big challenge today because they got 20 slides and they got 20 seconds for every slide and these slides don't stop, right? So I know I'm trying to mount pressure on them, but they'll be okay. But the really big thing about this whole thing is you gotta be supportive of what they're saying as well. So even though it's gonna be quick and to the point, they're gonna give, some, give us some really good juice and, uh, and we hope you leave today inspired or um, wanting to do uh, more in the realm of uh, sustainability, in, especially in the residential uh, sector. <coughs> Just this quick intro for our first uh, presenter. Our first presentation is by Brett Aylin, who is the um, architect behind the Zero Carbon Challenge House, and he's a co-founder of TS4 Living. Now, he's been working in the industry for over 20 years um, and has a broad experience uh, on sustainability at all levels. Now, um, Brett is also the founder of the Adelaide Sustainable Building Network. So, you guys actually wouldn't be here enjoying these festivities if it wasn't for him trying to do something special uh, five years ago. So we're just picking off where, where he left off. Hit the road, all right, let's do this. Welcome up, Brett. You don't like that. So yeah, it's good to see a big crowd here. Like Ken said, um, I founded the Adelaide Sustainable Building Network. Oh, I'm, I'm on. <laughs> okay, here we go. A Tale of Two Houses by TS4 Living. This is Lock Hill Park. Um, I've actually been involved in Lock Hill Park for quite a while, back from the master planning stage. And so we won a competition out there to design and build a zero carbon house. That's house number one. And house number two is a follow-up. Um, we got a commission to do a second house out there. So there they are in context. The house on the left being the, the zero carbon house. It sits nicely alongside the green. And the house on the right is, is the one on the far left there on the end. And it, it kind of blends in nicely. I think they both actually blend in quite nicely into the, to the village. And houses are for people. I, I, I would like to stress that right from the beginning. So that they have quite different um, process. Uh, the Zero Carbon House was a competition, so we didn't have a real person that we were designing for, but there was certainly a brief. And with house number two, it was for a retired couple. Now, houses are there to protect us, in a sense, from the environment, from the weather, from the climate, and as we know, um, the climate in Australia is, is fairly extreme and, and is getting more extreme. Um, global warming is, is a real issue. So there's all these kind of record-breaking uh, events, and our houses respond to that. And how do they do that? Well, they're very different um, locations, these two houses, although they're both within the village. You can see their house number one uh, to, to the north. It's, it's exposed to the north, east, and west. Um, so we responded to that by giving it a lot of north glass and then putting up quite a bit of shading to the east and the west. So there it is, north elevation. It's a really good opportunity there to, to, to let in a lot of sun, um, but as you can see, there are shade structures there as well. There's a lot of stuff growing up over a lot of those shade structures, so you don't really get a full sense of what it's going to be like, but the, um, the, the low-down structures have stuff growing over them. And there it is on the inside, so some fun features. There's a spiral staircase in there for a bit of fun. Um, that's a bioethanol burning fire in there, so it's a zero emission fire. There's, there's that plus um, a couple of electric panel heaters, so the house doesn't need much heating, and it has indirect evaporative cooling, so you can see a cooling register above the kitchen. Now, house number two, in a way, was much more challenging to design because there's another house immediately to the north, so the only way we were able to get much north sun into this house was to actually pull it back and create that courtyard that you see there. 
and it, it still had exposure to the to the east and west, but it had a lot of um, I guess there was a lot of challenge to, to, to integrate it into that streetscape, um, but not leave it too exposed to the east. So we finished up with a, a shade screen, and rather than rely on stuff growing on this house, um, we decided to put that two-storey shade screen up. And it actually works quite well with the houses next door because they also have those horizontal lines. Now, this is the inside of this house, and you can see I shot this um, about two weekends ago, so one of those nice sunny winter days and the sun is coming right into the living room, which is really what we wanted to achieve. There's an exposed um, concrete floor there. And you can see a light strip down the, down the left-hand side there throwing some LED light onto that back wall, which is a nice feature. So here I was talking about controlling the intense um, sun. So there's the western facade of each of those. So on the left there, um, we've got stuff growing up over that facade. And, and on the right, house number two, we've We've gone with that um, slatted screen, and there is some stuff growing over there. And it's sometimes good to have flexible shading because you can't always control the sun um, just with fixed shading because our climate is such that it's, it's nice to be able to vary the shading depending on the time of year and the time of day and what you're doing. So we often put movable shade devices like that, um, especially over the outdoor spaces, so you can sit in the sun or sit in the shade. And there's a great example a couple of weekends ago, the shade open and the shade closed. So, you know, you can just imagine sitting in the sun there and, and really soaking up the sun on a winter's day. But then, you know, a day like today, if you're sitting in the sun, you'd probably get too hot, so you can roll the shade across. So there it is again inside um, house number two. I just thought I'd highlight that um, LED strip down there because the owners told me that in the middle of winter when it's really grey outside and they get up in the morning and they turn that on, they actually really enjoyed that because it felt a little bit like sun almost being cast into the room. So the effect of it is almost like having a, a skylight or clerestory windows along there. Now, how do we make our houses actually respond to the climate? One of the ways in particular that we do that is to seal them well against drafts because obviously if a house is uh, leaking, then it's not being controlled from the outside environment. And we've had these houses um, tested with a, uh, what's called a blower door test. That's that apparatus on the left. So you essentially pressurise the house. The image in the middle is a little smoke stick. Um, and while the house was pressurised, testing for leakage around the lights. And on the right there, you can see the window is very sealed up with all of that foam. So this is just a couple of the simple principles of, of how we seal up a house well. And a little note here, thanks to CSR, is insulation is good, but you've got to be careful how it's installed as well. So if it, this photograph on the left, you can see it's been squeezed into those spaces. And then on the right, you can see a thermal image, and you can see the really yellow is, is kind of the, the heat bleeding through there. So you need to insulate well, um, but you need to install it well. So there's an example on the left of one of our houses with a nice and neat install in the insulation. Then also on the outside of the house, we actually wrap um, our houses with uh, a foam board product which, which really completes the insulation layer and also helps the air seal. And then there's an extra timber batten that goes on the outside there to create an air space to the cladding. So that's that same end of the house. Um, over the top of those timber battens, that corrugated iron has been fixed. And that's just a sense of looking into that courtyard space. So you can see there that's that house to the north is, is quite dominant, but we've pulled it back, created a nice courtyard space, and that's kind of the nice result. This one is a bit different. We've got, um, you know, possibility to have courtyard on both sides. This is a nice southern courtyard with that nice big tree in there. It's always good to have, you know, as much nature as you possibly can, even on a tight site like this. So that's why it's built up garden beds and, you know, that real indoor-outdoor relationship is very important. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bill. I'd like to keep you with that.